There are three unanswered questions when it comes to Brian Griffin in Family Guy. One, how can he be an atheist if he's met God? Jesus lived with us for like a week. What else do you need? Two, why can he talk when most other dogs can't? Oh my God, you can talk. And thirdly, how the hell does a dog date so many human women? I know, making out with a dog? Can you even imagine a woman who possibly does that for real? Yep, this hound dog has pretty much humped every single leg and cohog, having far more girlfriends than literally any other cartoon character in history. So I'm gonna go through them all today, find out why each one failed, and figure out who Brian Griffin's true soulmate is. So therefore, let's start by going all the way back to season two's Brian's in Love. Here, Brian finds that he just can't stop peeing himself, and it gets so bad that he goes to therapy to seek out the root cause, which results in him realizing that he has feelings for his best friend's wife. And he knows it's wrong, but he just can't help it. Look, I love Lois, but I'm, I'm not in love with her. Mm -hmm. Who are you trying to convince, Brian, me or you? So he sits down with Lois to confess his true feelings, but Lois already knows and lets him down in the best and most gentlest way possible. A very special friendship. Someone like me wouldn't change for anything in the world. It was really sweet, right up until Brian ruins it by making doubly sure that she definitely wasn't interested. Okay, just to be clear, we, we were talking about me being in love with you and, and you rejecting me, right? Yes. I'm just making sure. Brian would continue to harbor feelings for Lois throughout the show, even going on to marry her in season four's perfect castaway. He manages to do this because Peter gets himself lost at sea and is presumed dead. So Brian and Lois get a marriage of convenience, and even though there's no romantic feelings on Lois's side, Brian still tried his luck by attempting to push their beds together. Jeez, enough with that already. You're like a dog with a bone. Tell me about it. But when Peter returns alive and well, he starts sleeping with Lois behind Brian's back, which he's pissed about until he realizes that Lois didn't really love him and he's getting in the way of her true happiness. Therefore, breaks things off with her. You're a good friend. You're a good friend too, Lois. Oh, that's kind of nice. And to rub salt in the wound even further, Lois reveals that she was just one day away from finally pushing those beds together. I was gonna push those beds together and take you around the freaking world, Brian. <laughs> Later on in season five, Brian would again push his luck by trying to grab her boob, rightfully receiving a good old smack in return. Despite these constant rejections, he would shoot one last shot with Lois in season six's Play Again Brian. Here, Peter and Lois are having marital issues, so Brian invites them to Martha's Vineyard, where he's won an award for an essay he wrote, and it's on the trip where Brian really tries to lay the moves on thick, like dedicating his poem to Lois, and just as she's about to get a bit tipsy, bam, he pounces. What are you doing? I can't help myself, Lois. I know you're married to Peter, but I love you and I can't stand it anymore. She manages to get him off her and luckily kicks him out. So yeah, Brian seems like a huge creep that just can't take no for an answer. The ending shows them having a heart to heart where Brian apologizes and Lois admits that she has also thought about it too. It's not like I haven't thought about it. At first, Brian's attraction to Lois was pretty innocent and I just wish they left it at that, with Brian realizing that they were better off friends, but it really got to the point where he was just a sex pest or sex pet. Oh, no, that's disgusting. Anyway, you know it's bad when even Quagmire tries to call you out on it. You constantly hit on your best friend's wife. The man pays for your food and rescued you from certain death, and this is how you repay him? So, Brian and Lois were never actually in a romantic relationship, and with how many human women Brian's been attached to over the years, it's easy to forget that Brian's first actual girlfriend was really a dog. In season three, Screw the Pooch, Brian fell for Carter Pewterschmidt's prized greyhound Seabreeze. And when he and Seabreeze were expecting puppies, Carter really was unhappy and tried to keep them apart. I, I just want you to know I am going to do the right thing here. You're not doing anything. In fact, you're never going to see Seabreeze again. So they go on the run together, but were eventually caught, but Brian wasn't going to let anyone keep him away from his puppies. And so fought for his parental rights in court. I, I love children, that's why I'm here. I want the opportunity to raise my puppies. But instead of a happy ending with Brian getting his own family, Seabreeze gives birth to a billionaire mogul's puppies, Ted Turner's to be precise, and yeah, it's weird. Also, side note, when I was younger, I didn't know who Ted Turner was, so I just thought these were Carter's weird hybrid puppies. As well as learning about Ted Turner, looking back, I was also shocked by how Brian was in these early seasons. 
Yes, today we know him as the pretentious douchebag who almost exclusively sleeps with only young, hot women who he has nothing in common with. But here, Brian is actually fighting to not only be with Seabreeze, but also fighting to be a father. Well, actually, I I was kind of looking forward to being a dad. Oh, well, don't worry. There'll be other chances. It's hard to imagine that this is the same dog who, after finding out he's actually a father, completely neglects him. But... I'll get onto that a bit later on. You failed college twice, which isn't nearly as bad as your failure as a father. How's that son of yours you never see? By the way, how are you enjoying my new digs? Pretty sweet, huh? I've got Cartman's Clyde Frog up here next to the books I've written, Rick's portal gun right down here, Roger's bar sign, and I did want to add more Family Guy stuff too, but I just couldn't think of anything iconic enough, so if you think of any, do let me know. Oh yeah, and I've also got my Gamer Subs cup and drink right beside me here, because I'm now a Gamer Subs partner. I'm so stoked about this because I literally have Gamer Subs almost on my day to day. In the morning, I drink their Black Cherry Gamer Subs as a pre-workout for the gym. In the afternoon, I have their Gamer Soup Instant Ramen. And then I drink some of my favorite Mango Meta Flavor Gamer Subs for recording, so I sound extra peppy. And to wind down in the evenings, I have a cup of their Gamer Tea Sleepy Time with Theanine. I have it with a really good book, and it's caffeine-free, and it's a soothing blend of lavender, lemon, peppermint, and natural vanilla. And I genuinely believe it relieves my stress, improves my mood, and I do get to sleep a whole lot quicker. You see, doing these long ass videos means I need good sleep and good energy. But not from crappy energy drinks or bars high in sugar, calories and no nutritional value. No, Gamer Subs offer a healthier alternative that have less than one calorie per serving, zero sugar, five crucial vitamins and minerals and nootropics for a calmer focus. So it doesn't give you that anxious feeling or make you bounce off the walls that can distract you from what you're actually doing. I can crack on and I'm focused. So try them for yourself and get a 10% discount off your order on any products by clicking my link down in the description, which automatically applies my discount code CARTOON. They also come out with legit cool merchandise, like shaker cups and creator collaborations, which makes me so excited because with your help, we could get the opportunity to create our own flavor and merchandise, and we could design them together. And with all the cartoons we cover, that could mean some really awesome fun flavors. So if you'd like to help make this happen, use my discount code offering 10% off all orders by clicking the link in the description. Back to the video, so after Lois rejected him and Seabreeze gave birth to someone else's puppies, Brian would find love again, but in a very unexpected place. In the episode Brian Wallows, Peter Swallows, Brian goes on a date with a woman, but soon finds out that they have nothing in common. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Well, sure I do. Opera's bitchin'. Back at home, Brian laments to Lois that he'll never find an intelligent woman to love. But when he's pulled over for driving under the influence, he is sentenced to community service, with him being ordered to take care of an elderly lady called Pearl. Oh, ye a miserable old bat and so the two hate each other, like, it even goes this far. Why don't you do the world a big favor and drop dead? While back at home, Brian watches a TV program about the mysterious disappearance of Pearl Burton, a once famous singer who had the most wonderful voice. My God, and I said all those awful things to her. Brian realizes the mistake he's made and runs to Pearl's house just in time to stop her unaliving herself. I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. But you're not scheduled tomorrow. I know. And so, with his newfound appreciation of her, the two fall in love and everything is wonderful, right up until she's hit by a truck. I wouldn't be standing here right now if it wasn't for you! <gasps> so, with Pearl on her deathbed, Brian puts on some VR goggles and her and himself to live out the rest of their lives together in simulation, traveling the world and having children. Goodbye, Pearl. This has to be one of the most heartfelt moments that Family Guy has ever done. It's beautiful, and one I really can't imagine them doing today. Back in the early seasons, Brian didn't seem to be as superficial, i.e. only dating for looks and sex. He was looking for real companionship, and someone he had actual things in common with. And I think he found that with Pearl, but it was just a really bittersweet ending. It's in season 4's Brian the Bachelor where he'd meet his next girlfriend. So, in it, Cleveland is looking to start dating again after leaving Loretta, so auditions to go on The Bachelorette, but he doesn't get it because of Peter. Hi, we're here for the interview? 
So Brian goes in to apologize for them, but the producers love him so much that they sign him up for the show instead. And at first, Brian refuses because he hates those dating reality shows and thinks they're all fake. Yeah, I thought you said the shows were stupid. They are stupid. But eventually agrees because at least he'd get a free holiday. What he doesn't expect, however, is that Brooke, the bachelorette, gives him a rose. I feel like I didn't get to know you at all. Would you accept this rose? <sighs> all right. So he and Brooke start spending more time together, and although he dismissed the show at first, he starts to realize that they actually have a lot in common. This is just so not me. I, I would much rather just be home listening to my old jazz records. Really? And soon enough, he actually wants to win the competition and be with Brooke. Never felt this way about anyone before. I mean, I'm in love. That's it. So it comes down to just him and Quagmire. And side note, it really is funny to remember that these two were actually friends back in the day. And if you're interested in an evolution of their rivalry, check out this video right here. But after this one, of course. See, so yeah, after Quagmire tries to arrange a threesome between Brooke and his mom, Brian is of course given the final rose. And he's elated right up until he finds out that his original suspicions were true. Brooke wasn't here for love. She just wanted the fame. What, what, what about us? Oh, stop it. It's just TV. Despite this, though, Brian still continued to call her constantly, and when that didn't work out, just showed up at her house. Brooke, I'm so in love with you. Oh! Oh! So here, Brian wasn't immediately interested in Brooke because of her looks. He only fell for her once they spent more time together and saw their compatibility. Now, if Family Guy did this story today, Brian would instead be drawn by her looks, try to sleep with her, even if that meant telling all kinds of lies to succeed. I have to say, these early Brian-centric episodes are really great. Now, if you really wanted to get analytical here, you could say that these failed romances caused Brian to stop looking for love and instead just seek out meaningless sex. I say this because he was betrayed by Seabreeze, Pearl died right after they fell in love, and he was simply tricked by Brooke. So, it's no wonder he became more cynical. But let's be honest here, this isn't Bojack Horseman, Family Guy isn't that complex, and I do doubt if the writers even considered this. But all in all, I personally like to think that Brian's character development was caused by these experiences. It just makes it seem a bit more valid. Also in season four, Brian would then date Shauna Parks, Meg's high school teacher, but Brian had this strange fixation on the fact that she was black. Uh, that's a lovely color. That your, your, your dress is a love color. Your dress is, is I, I like, uh, you're, you're very pretty. And he can't stop over fixating on Shauna's skin color to the point where he blurts out that he's a huge fan of Martin Luther King. I love MLK, man. He's, he's my guy. He's, he's, I mean, I, I love all black people. From this, he then campaigns that the school should be named after him and not the actor James Woods. He's doing all this not because he wants to truly honor MLK, but because he wants to impress Shauna. And I love that Peter calls him out on this. At least I wasn't trying to change the name of the school to impress my girlfriend. Now that is not true. Oh yeah? Well then why'd you pick Martin Luther King? All in all, Brian and Shauna's time together was pretty brief, simply because she wasn't very happy that he was still friends with Peter. It's either him or me. Shauna, come on. Why you want to play a brother like that? I think I have my answer. So it's in season five where he'll meet who I think at least is his true love, Gillian. Gillian was not only absolutely gorgeous, but she is super sweet and nice. Her only downside being that she's a few French fries short of a Happy Meal. I was watching something on TV about this guy named Hitler. <gasps> Somebody should stop him. But instead of being content that he was with a kind and attractive woman, Brian was instead embarrassed by her, even trying to hide her from his family. But as soon as Stewie found out, he invited Gillian over just to mess with him. Are you serious? Are you serious, Brian? But Lois, she made fun of Gillian, which is rich because she is also in a relationship with a real idiot. But yes, this will become a common trait as we go along, where the family will continue to make fun of Brian's girlfriends every time he introduces them. So Brian decides that he has to break up with her, but when he goes to her apartment to do it, he instantly changes his mind. I, uh, just wanted to spend some time with you. For a show where continuity barely exists, this relationship is carried over into the following episodes, and in season six, they actually move in together, after some encouragement by Peter and Lois. Well, I think you should, Brian. She's beautiful, she's funny, and she is smart as the day is wide. 
They tell him that he either needs to get serious or just break up with her. And although he was reluctant at first, Brian finds that he really does enjoy living with Jillian. Just feels right, you know? Cool! Rock on, Brian! Okay, done. Before he let slip that he never actually wanted to move in with her, and so she broke up with him. Oh my god! I've never felt so stupid! Really? Brian is miserable and comes to the realization that maybe he really loves her after all. So he runs to win her back, but it's too late because she's already moved in with Adam West. Please don't send me away. I have to. You broke my heart. I really do like Gillian. Sure, she's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but at least she's smart enough to know her self-worth and actually rejects Brian. He took her for granted and he paid the price for it. It's a really good ending, with the camera moving away as Brian realizes his mistake with the score playing underneath. Not long after Gillian, Brian would meet another new flame called Carolyn at the library when they both go to reach for the same copy of Richard Dawkins' The God Illusion. They go out for dinner and instantly hit it off over the fact that they're both atheists. Oh, you know, Carolyn, I rarely find myself connecting with another person like I have with you. I'm really enjoying your company. They spend more time together and they really connect. But just when Carolyn asks him to come upstairs, Stewie interrupts and gets involved by telling Brian that he always ruins his relationships by going too fast and having sex. I do. I, I always try and jump into the sex right away. Maybe that's what screws things up? So Brian abstains from having sex, choosing to take a more slower approach and build a deeper emotional connection first. But he waits too long and Carolyn thinks he's just not sexually interested in her. So she sleeps with Cleveland. Oh my God! Carolyn? Cleveland? Oh, hey, Brian. Close that window. You're letting all the stank out. And Brian, he blames this all on Stewie. What? You're the one who told me to wait. Oh, you're crazy, bitch. I didn't say that, bitch. But it's good that he didn't sleep with Carolyn because she gave Cleveland genital warts. Brian, do you think you could identify a genital wart? Now, Carolyn was just a fling at the end of the day because Brian was still very much hung up on his ex, Jillian. And in season seven's We Love You Conrad, he's totally crushed when he learns that she's getting married. And he's even more devastated when he learns that everyone is invited to the wedding except for him. So Stewie sets up a double date with Gillian and her new fiance so they can meet, and much to Brian's annoyance, her new man is absolutely perfect in every single way. Wow, you're the best man ever. Oh, hardly. This only sends him on a further downward spiral and he gets drunk at a bar. And it's here where he meets the famous reality star, Lauren Conrad. They spend the night together and just when they're about to part ways, they're spotted by Stewie. Ryan, is that you? Is that Lauren Con- uh, yeah, my God, I was shopping for hats. Hang on, I'm coming over. And this has to be one of my favorite Stewie moments in the entire show. Anyway, Brian and Conrad start dating, and at first he assumed that Conrad was just a dumb TV star, but she's incredibly smart, a fact that really annoys Brian to no end. Special exhibition of rare Monet paintings and- Manet, honey. What? It was actually the Manet exhibit, not Monet. This is because Brian loves being the more intelligent one in a relationship, which was a big reason why he liked Jillian in the first place. This isn't about me being smarter than you. This is about you still being in love with Jillian. How do you know that? Because I'm smarter than you, Brian. Conrad is understanding of this and encourages Brian to get Jillian back by crashing their wedding. And he does, interrupting their vows and begs for her to come back to him. But once again, Jillian turns him down. Will you please take me back? Brian, no. You had your chance. She really is an underrated character and is played perfectly by Drew Barrymore. And although Barrymore is great in the role, the downside is, is that she can't really be used very often because she's so darn busy. But luckily, she did return in season 9's Then There Were Fewer, where her husband Derek is murdered by news reporter Diane. And on first viewing, I have to admit that I thought they only killed off Derek so Gillian and Brian would get back together, but it's been around 13 years since then, and they've never really followed up on it, which is a shame because I do feel like there could be a lot more that you could do with these two characters, but I don't know, maybe it's for the best. So with the Gillian romance arc concluded, for now at least, let's go to the rest of his dating history. So literally one episode after she turned Brian down for the second time at her wedding, he meets a brand new attractive blonde woman after Peter crashed into her car. He asks her out to dinner and when he goes to her house to pick her up later that night, her mother tells him that she's already out on another date. So Brian asks her instead. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> I kind of do. Rita is the total opposite of Jillian. For one thing, she's a lot more mature at 50 years old. Despite this, Lois is dubious, saying that he only dates bimbos. No, it just seems like some of your past girlfriends have been a little dumb and trampy. And then when she does finally meet her, she's still not happy and makes fun of his older girlfriend. What do I think? She's a hundred! <laughs> oh my god! And when he brings her over for dinner, Lois and Peter still can't help themselves by talking about her age. Peter, how old are you? How old are you? 50, okay, I'm 50, happy now. Brian calls them out on being so narrow-minded and declares that he loves her and proposes. Come on, you're only 50, you heard me. Will you marry me? Oh, Brian, yes. And although he said he didn't care about her age, it did start to bother him after a while, so much so that it's the only thing he can think about. Oh yeah, that's the summer my family went to DC. That uh, flag's missing some stars there. <laughs> and it only gets worse because when Rita breaks a rib while they're making love, Brian basically has to become her full-time carer. And when he goes out to get her some medicine, he stops at a bar to get a drink, and after a few, he sleeps with a younger woman. It's after this cheating, he goes back home to tell Rita and come clean. He actually thinks she's gonna be okay with this because by cheating, he realized that age isn't actually an issue for him. But it's too late and she kicks him out. Leave him on the shiffer robe. You know what, just take your keys. I don't know what the you're talking about. I do really love these moments when these women call out Brian on his BS. It's kind of cathartic. You know what, Brian? You're not old enough for me. What? You cheated on me, that's what happened today. By this point, Family Guy has done at least one Brian dating episode per season. So for season seven, Brian finds an unlikely dalliance with Quagmire's parent, Ida. So in the episode of Quagmire's dad, Ida tells her son that she is a woman and will be undergoing gender reassignment surgery. And after this operation, Quagmire is not supportive at all and they have a big fight. Do I wanna be happy the rest of my life or miserable? So now you're happy and I'm miserable. So she heads to a bar where she meets Brian, who impresses her by saying that he's a writer. So I finally tell them, hey, I came here to be at the seminar, not run it. <laughs> <laughs> the morning after, Brian is so excited to tell Peter and Lois all about the amazing woman he met. <laughs> Confused by their reactions, Brian then tells Stewie, and he's the one who tells him that Ida is a trans woman. What is it, like Danielle or Dana? No, Ida. And he has this reaction. Ah! Oh, what? What the hell? What's wrong with you? I had sex with her! Quagmire soon hears that Ida slept with his worst ever enemy, so goes over and kicks the absolute crap out of Brian. But he would still have the last word. I f your dad. Like I mentioned earlier, Family Guy barely has any canon, with everything resetting by the next episode, with no real lessons learnt. However, after researching for this video, it is surprising how continuity really seems to work specifically when it comes to Brian's relationships. Because his encounter with Ida is brought up again in Season 10's Thanksgiving. Hello, Brian. How have you been? Very well, thank you. He threw up when he found out you were a monster. But this isn't the last of these two, as they'll continue their relationship a whole eight seasons later in the episode Brider. Meaning that they set up something in 2008, which then followed through a whole 10 seasons later. Which is kind of impressive for Family Guy. But I'm getting a bit too ahead of myself here. So rewinding back to season eight, and this is the point where I really noticed Brian being a bit more of a douchebag. This was quite a steady progression that I saw by the end of season four, where I did notice him being a bit more flanderized, which basically means when a character certain traits would be overplayed the longer the show went on. And in Brian's case, that meant his horniness and his sleaziness was dialed up to 11. In season nine's Teeks for Two, Brian takes Quagmire's pickup class after repeatedly striking out with women. And he becomes so good that he uses his brand new skills against his teacher by dating Quagmire's long lost love, Cheryl Teeks. <laughs> and to get payback, Quagmire dates Brian's true love, Jillian. Jillian? Hi, Brian. How are you? Oh, he's doing great. Isn't that right, pal? So the two start fighting, which causes both women to leave. That's all you are. Boys. Yeah, boys. Yay! I helped! 
And to make sure that Brian really was this womanizing douchebag, another season 9 episode painted him as a newly best-selling author who immediately started hitting on his fans. And is a complete dick when they reject him. I'm a little creeped out. Hey, congratulations, somebody famous now hates you. He even tried to get Stewie to help him sleep with his fans. Oh my god, were you, were you thinking of doing that? Uh, sending her to my room? No. This therefore showing that he is definitely not above abusing his power and influence to bed women. And just one season later, in the episode Blindside, Brian dates a blind girl called Kate. But the issue is, is that she hates dogs, so of course Brian takes advantage of her blindness and denies that he is in fact a dog. I'm just not really a dog person, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah, me neither. Dog people can get pretty annoying. He also pretends to take her to Paris. And I think I smell croissants? Do you? You have an amazing sense of smell. And then pretends to beat up some thugs. This guy's tough! <clears throat> no fair, he knows karate! And while yes, these scenes are very funny, and I don't take it seriously because it's a cartoon, but it just really highlights how much Brian has changed for the worse. So much so that even when her parents came to town, he covered himself in bandages and lied that he was horrifically burnt. Eventually she finds out the truth and dumps his ass, but not because he's a dog, but because he lied. You screwed up, Brian. And now you're gonna have to watch me walk out that door. The following seasons continue the trend of Brian dating women purely for their looks, regardless of their personality. Like in the episode Be Careful What You Fish For, Stewie's preschool teacher, Miss Emily, is neglectful and irresponsible. And Brian vows to give the teacher a piece of his mind, but finds her sunbathing and instantly forgets why he's there. Oh yeah, I should probably go back in there, see how everyone's doing, I guess. Ah, they're fine. Miss Emily is so bad that she lets strangers off the street wander in and just abduct the kids, which Brian sees but doesn't care about, and he actually defends her. You know, she's got a lot on her plate. She's got school, she's got work. This is her work! It's funny how Brian can act so self-righteous all of the time but then completely flip his morals as soon as he sees a pretty lady. And when Stewie dislocated his arm, he's more concerned that Miss Emily will lose her job rather than his best friend's well-being. I finally have a date with Miss Emily tomorrow and I'm not gonna let you or anybody else get in my way until I have seen every inch of her naked. So is there anything Miss Emily could do that could cause Brian to see sense and actually do something to stop her? Yes, and that's to find out that she has a boyfriend. Only then does he call the cops on her. There is a special place in hell for people like you. By this point, Brian has had at least nine failed relationships and that's not even included in a few dates we've seen him on before. So by season 11's Valentine's Day in Quahog, Brian wonders if he should just give up on dating altogether. How come it's so hard to meet the right woman? I think maybe it's just time for me to give up. So to get to the root cause of Brian's failure with women, Stu invites all of his past girlfriends over, which some we've seen in past episodes, but also quite a few we have never ever seen before, like a mogwai. And so it's up to them to tell Brian all the many ways he sucks. Self-absorbed comes to mind. And pretentious. Definitely pretentious. And he's got a big ego. But Brian barks back and insults all of them. You're an old bag. You're blind. Your vomit tastes weird. You don't even know why you're here. So this causes them all to chase him through town and the scene then cuts there with the ending revealing that somehow he's won them over. Unrealistic, but hey ho. After this, the show pretty much continues the trend of Brian dating a new person every single season, with Brian also continuing to happily lie to sleep with them, like in season 13, where he becomes obsessed with a runner called Chloe and so pretends that he is a runner too. You, uh, you in the game too? You mean running? Ah, uh, let me think what's on my trophies. Uh, yes. But the problem when you lie is that you have to keep up the charade, which means that for their first date, Chloe asks him to go running and Brian is really out of shape and he absolutely hates it. But he soon finds his runner's high and becomes addicted to running, making it his entire personality. And so he has to dump Chloe. What does your girlfriend think of this? I dumped her, she couldn't keep up with me. In season 14, Brian has not one, not two, but four episodes dedicated to his dating life. In Brokeback Swanson, Brian starts flirting with a blonde while his car is getting washed. You know, some people are okay with the drive-through car wash. Me? I'm a fan of the hand job. 
He wastes no time in going back to her place and having sex, but when her Navy SEAL boyfriend turns up and finds them, Brian quickly thinks on his feet and pretends to be a normal dog. Wow, his nose is super wet. He must be healthy. Yup, and somebody's been rooting in a sardine can. And they get the bright idea that as long as he thinks he's their pet, they can continue to fool around. God, Brian, you are such a scumbag. This ultimately leads Brian into being locked up in the garden and Tori doesn't even bother to set him free. Well, shocker. Your gross hookup from the car wash ended poorly? So his freedom is left to Stewie, Chris and Joe Biden. Second, give these kids their dog back. Of course, sir. I'm so sorry. A few episodes after this, Brian sets his sights on Meg's friend Patty. You see, Brian gets the total hot for her after he sees her changing. Holy crap, that was Patty! She's got a smoking hot body! Like, just when you thought that Brian could sink no lower, he literally pervs on a school kid. She's in high school! I know, and she's in high school! It's like 7am, dude, calm down. Granted, Patty is 18 and Brian is technically only 10 years old, but according to this dog age calculator, that would make him 56 in human years. And after seeing him date a 50 year old, seeing him now being interested in an 18 high schooler is super creepy and super, super wrong. Seriously, how did we go from Brian falling in love with an elderly woman back in season three to him literally wanting to sleep with a schoolgirl? <sighs> Anyway, Brian finds out as much information on Patty as possible from Meg and uses that to hit on her. This works and so Brian drives Patty to a secluded area for some one-on-one -on -one time. And just before he can take advantage of her, Meg soon comes to the rescue. Meg, I'm $18 into this evening, so can you maybe just get out of here? These episodes just go on to show how low Brian will really go now. Lying to a blind woman, manipulating a schoolgirl, and having an affair with a married woman. And the most frustrating thing is, is that he never learns from his mistakes, because after this, he finds a brand new romance with Bonnie in the episode, The Heartbreak Dog. On this channel, I've spoken at length about how Family Guy portrays marriage and how everyone seems to be miserable and having affairs. And Bonnie and Joe are just one of those couples, starting off very much in love, which then soon turn to hate. And so Brian finds Bonnie crying in her bedroom because of her marriage, and then Brian tries to comfort her with his lips. Afterwards, Brian confides in Peter by telling him what happened, and of course, Peter can never keep a secret, letting it slip during a game of charades. Wait, wait, I know it. The other night at your party, Brian kissed Bonnie. What? <gasps> Everyone makes them feel guilty for this, but Brian stands up for their new love. And yeah, maybe she kissed me. Maybe she needed to because she feels so trapped in her marriage. It's true. So the two run away together to start a new life, but when they get a job in a diner together, they're at each other's throats. If you could talk with even a little bit of inflection to your voice so it doesn't sound so much like a power sander. Eventually, Joe comes in and manages to win Bonnie back right before he shoots Brian in the foot. But do not worry because Brian will get over Bonnie very quickly when he falls for a customer service agent, Padma. So when his laptop freezes, he calls up customer support and instantly hits it off with her. Amazing. One second of a stranger's voice on a phone and you've got full Bollywood. And even when he fixes his laptop, he continues to call Padma every single day. I wish I could just somehow magically appear there and meet you in person. Oh, Brian, that would be like a dream. Brian thinks she's the one, and so he and Stewie travel all the way to India to meet her. And with a population of 1.4 billion, Brian somehow finds her very quickly. I was having a technical issue with my heart. Ugh, 16 hours on a plane and that's what you came up with? It's here where Padma invites them to a gathering her parents are having. But just when they arrive, they discover it's an engagement party. But Padma announces that she's calling off the engagement because she's in love with Brian. His name is Brian Griffin, and my heart belongs to him. <gasps> At first, her father is against this, but he then agrees to the relationship on the condition that Brian pays him back for the dowry that he's already spent. And after several failed attempts to raise the money, Padma informs him that the problem has just been solved. My father has solved the problem by promising Deeraj the hand of my younger sister. But this isn't a happy ending because Padma soon realizes that they are from two different worlds and that Brian knows nothing about her culture. And although it didn't work out, at least Brian did save her from a marriage that she didn't want to be in. 
By coming here, you saved me from a lifetime of unhappiness. And I will always love you for that. So this is one of the rare cases where Brian didn't actually do anything wrong, and he really did want to make it work. And the same can be said with his next romance with Ellie. In season 16's Boy Dog Meets Girl Dog, Brian is once again miserable and lonely on Valentine's Day, so he eats a whole box of chocolates. This of course is poisonous to dogs and he is taken to the vets, and it's here where he meets a female dog called Ellie and they instantly hit it off. Hey, I'm Brian. Shake. Nice to meet you. I'm Ellie. This is the first time he's had a relationship with an actual dog since season 2, and honestly, I don't know why they don't do this more often. It's definitely a lot less creepy. Truth is, I haven't felt this way with anyone in a long time. Oh, Brian, you literally say that every single time. And it turns out that Ellie is a show dog. Therefore, she can't be physical with Brian because her owners have promised that she can only mate with the dog that wins the upcoming show. So Brian enters the show to be with Ellie, which she finds very, very attractive. And he genuinely does well and ends up winning the competition, but their first time together isn't exactly romantic because as part of competition rules, Brian must breed with her right in front of everyone. Which, of course, Brian can't go along with. Quagmire? What are you doing here? Oh, I have an all-access pass to anything in this town that's sex-related. So instead, the runner-up dog is brought in, and Brian has to say a very awkward goodbye. And I'll always remember you, Ellie. So once again, the relationship ends through no fault of Brian's. So after dating both dogs and humans, Brian's next relationship would be with a robot. In this season 16 episode, the Griffins buy an Alexa called Brandy, and Brian is instantly opposed to her. There was a time, not too long ago, when people would talk to each other. Yeah, the bad times. That's until he starts talking to her. That's weird. You're on a weird date. So he spends time with Brandy, takes her out to the movies, and his feelings begin to grow. But because Brandy is just an Alexa, he starts spending so much money on crap that he can't afford. Which then leads on to the dead collectors to arrive and start taking everything, including Brandy. I'm gonna miss you too, Brandy. But don't feel too bad for him because he'll fall for another robot soon after this episode. So in Bri Robot, it's Brian's birthday and he's feeling depressed and worries that he will be forgotten after he's gone. So Stewie offers to help him write his life story, but instead of writing a book, Stewie then makes a robotic clone of Brian. It's like another you, uploaded with your genetic code, your cognitive patterns, and your entire life story. This robot named RB is the perfect replica of Brian in every single way. And as we all know, the one person who Brian loves the most is, of course, himself. So he falls in love with his robot clone and they start to have sex, which we know about because Stewie gets a notification every time robot Brian's rectal sensor is triggered. The two actually become an official couple for a while, but in addition to loving himself, the person who Brian loathes the most in the world is also himself. Because RB basically holds a mirror up that reflects back all of Brian's many, many flaws. And before long, this new love turns into new hate. You've made me realize I hate myself. And once Brian comes to the realization that he hates himself, RB shuts down. This is because Stewie wants to make a point, which is that nobody would ever, ever in a million years be interested in Brian's autobiography. Which is super harsh, but to be fair, it's also true. Brian does need a reality check sometimes. In that same season, Brian would find love again, with a human this time, in the episode Married with Cancer. The episode starts out with Brian sneaking out to a club and Stewie calls out on his douchebagness. Because the truth is, you're a selfish horn dog who's getting too old for the game. Which is totally correct, by the way. Anyway, at the club, Brian is trying far too hard to be hip and with the kids by using lingo that nobody uses anymore. That seems kind of whack, right? Like zero chill. I can't understand you. If Brian really was looking for love like he said he was, he wouldn't be hitting on young women in a club, but even still, he meets a girl called Jess at the bar, and after telling him that she has cancer, she invites him back to her place. So after some freaky, freaky sex, she then explains that she has a sex bucket list and she wants to complete it before she dies. So the two bang everywhere, and I mean everywhere, on Wonka's flying elevator, while she's doing her school photography job, and in front of an Asian man holding a gun. 
Brian invites her around for dinner and of course, everyone won't stop talking about his girlfriend having cancer. At least I don't have cancer like your girlfriend. That's it, I'm getting you out of here. And when they're out for dinner, she collapses and when she's in hospital, they are told that the cancer has spread and give her only two weeks to live. Brian feels awful about this and proposes to her on the spot, which is a really kind and selfless gesture. Maybe Brian really has changed for the better here. But then again, maybe not, because on the same day of the wedding, her doctor rushes in to inform her that the cancer has been cured and that she's going to live after all. And instead of being happy that his new wife was gonna live, Brian is gutted. He never wanted anything long-term, he just wanted some good freaky sex and to be seen and admired for marrying a dying girl. I'll give you my number. Here, I'll put my number in with my tongue. <clears throat> but now that she's healthy, he feels trapped. Also adding on the fact that she is now overeating and is completely full of farts. I must have like six months worth of cancer farts built up. <clears throat> Worse still is that she has like 10 cats that now live in their apartment, making Brian miserable, but of course he can't leave because not only is the whole town invested in their love story, but without Brian's love, she could relapse. If you ever take that love away from Jess, I hope people walk right up to you on the street and punch you in the junk. But his prayers are answered when they go out for dinner and Jess chokes on a nacho and seemingly dies. This gives Brian the perfect escape and he's finally free. But then Jess miraculously wakes up at her own funeral. It's a miracle! <laughs> Instead of ending it right there and resetting everything to the status quo like Family Guy normally does every episode, this storyline carried over into the next one, Dead Dog Walking. Brian is once again trapped in a marriage, but Peter shows him that married life isn't so bad because, well, he can finally wear khaki shorts and actually breathe out. <sighs> wow, that feels amazing. He becomes so unhealthy that he breaks a hip and Jess has to start taking care of him, essentially becoming his slave. But Jess eventually gets really fed up of this and so takes him to the vet to be euthanized, which is a bit harsh, like, I mean, you could have just divorced him, Jess. You didn't have to kill him. When Peter finds out what she's done, he comes to Brian's rescue, saving him just in time before he's put down. Afterwards, Brian confronts his wife, but she reminds him that he let her choke to death. Gosh, maybe that's what true marriage is. Two people who want each other to die. And just when you think that maybe they will actually stay married and Jess will become a regular character, she's then dead in the next scene. She was the love of my life. But I know, I know, it's obvious, Brian wouldn't remain single for long, because an old time flame would come back into his life in the season 18 episode, Brida. Here, Brian and Ida reconnect at a bar and he suggests they get a room. The following morning, Ida believes that Brian will once again pretend that nothing has happened between them, but he surprises her by actually asking her out on a proper date. However, he's still embarrassed to be seen with her, so Ida calls him out on this, he apologises, and then asks her to be his girlfriend. Girlfriend? Are you sure, Brian? I'm sure. Brian then takes Ida and tells his family the big news, but instead of shaming him like they've always done, they're actually really, really supportive. Wow, Brian and Ida, good for them. Now the only person left to tell is Quagmire, who, as you'd expect, doesn't take the news too well, especially when Brian tries to act like a dad towards him. He's not my dad. I already have a dad and it's my mom. All right, Brian, stop trying to be my dad, you fraud. So therefore, Quagmire gives Ida an ultimatum. I can't take this anymore. It's either him or me. Of course, Ida can't choose someone over her own son, so she chooses to break up with Brian. And honestly, this is when you kind of feel bad for Brian because the relationship ended through no fault of his own. I feel that Brian has really grown as a person and they were happy together right up until Quagmire had to ruin it. So after Ida breaks up with him, Brian starts flirting with a footlocker saleswoman called Holly in the season 19 episode, Boy's Best Friend. And when he goes by her house later that night to pick her up for their date, she introduces him to her son. I actually have a kid. Oh, that's sweet. How old is he? Uh, I don't know. How long ago was Ratatouille? Speaking of Brian's forgotten son, Dylan, I totally forgot to mention his mother, Tracy, who first appeared all the way back in season 6's The Former Life of Brian. Tracy was once Brian's old girlfriend, and when he looked her up many years later, he discovered he had a son he never knew about. It's not surprising that Brian is a complete deadbeat dad who never sees his son, and the show constantly makes fun of this. 
How's your son, Brian? We don't talk, but Ida, you can't blame yourself. So after traumatizing the child about school shootings, he takes Holly out on a date. And the next day, Brian tries to make an effort with his girlfriend's kid by building a Pinewood Derby car, but Carl wants nothing to do with Brian. But when some bullies start picking on him, Brian comes to his rescue. Thanks, Brian. Nobody's ever stood up for me like that before. Well, I think my instincts just kicked in. After this, the two really do become close, and he invites them over for dinner to meet his family. And like I mentioned before, how come every time Brian brings a new girlfriend over to meet the Griffins, they always make it so darn awkward? When measuring yourself, what do you count as the base? Peter! What? She measures stuff for a living! It looks like things are going pretty well, but when Brian brings up about taking Carl to a theme park, Holly is pretty hesitant and breaks up with him right there and then. If we break up, does that mean I won't get to see Kyle either? But Brian is more upset that he can't see Kyle again, which I think is really quite cute. And it also maybe goes to show that Brian does regret about not being around for his own son. Brian misses Kyle so much that he goes to his Pinewood Derby race and asks Holly if he can continue being a parental figure to her son. And so he becomes Kyle's babysitter while his ex goes out on dates, which is a really super cute ending and maybe goes to show that Brian really is ready to settle down and therefore get serious and start a family of his own. So does this happen? No, of course not because this is Family Guy. We cannot have any character development here. In the next few seasons, he'll sleep around with Stewie's foreign bride's lacquer and hooks up with a carny called Amber in season 21. And most recently, in season 22, he pretends to be a Christian so his religious vet nurse would go out with him. But as soon as she tells him that she doesn't believe in sex before marriage, he instantly drops the charade. Now, before I started writing the script, I honestly forgot just how many relationships Brian has been in. And just when I thought I'd finished, I'd suddenly remember another new one. In many ways, Brian's relationships can chart his evolution, or rather, devolution throughout the show. His early relationship storylines with Pearl, Seabreeze, and Gillian were really well written, but compare them to these most recent ones and, nah, not so much. So out of all of these women and robots, who do I believe is Brian's one true love? Well, him and Pearl genuinely were really sweet, but their futures together were just a virtual reality, really. I think it could have worked if their ages would have matched, but all in all, considering what we know of Brian, I think it's pretty obvious that it's Gillian. She is the definition of the one that got away. And sure, she wasn't exactly intelligent, but that's what Brian kind of liked. And also, she had more authentic qualities, like sweetness and kindness. And Brian totally blew it. But what do you guys think? Who do you think is Brian's true soulmate? Let me know in the comments and let's have a chat. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.